asked when we arrived today, oh, you're the dancers. Um, <laughs> we cannot dance to save our lives. And in this heat, uh, I think we'll probably pass out. But um, please bear with us. Uh, it's more performance, uh, more presentation than performance. Um, but we are extremely excited to share with you the very first uh, sharing of our uh, an insight into Matt Accord's work. This is yesterday, as we as we spoke about earlier. Just to remind you, I'm Denny, and this is Sam. Um, and these ideas are very much in their initial stages. Um, now, like I say, you're possibly wondering why we have no set and we have no costume, uh, and it's because the, the first stage of This Is Yesterday is an online interactive story. Um, it's Manic Court's first venture into a work of this sort, um, but we'd love to share some of those ideas with you today. Um, I'd like to start by playing you uh, a piece of music that's really informed uh, this piece, and a bit later on you'll see where we taken that, uh, that piece of music. Um, it's a piece of, it's a Chopin nocturne. Um, and we'd like you to listen to the shape of the piece, uh, and in particular, how Chopin, through this piece, uh, paints his emotional journey. So I'm just gonna ask that the lights be slightly dim. Don't worry if you close your eyes and start to drift a little bit, um, and just listen to the music.
No. <laughs> um, yeah, so without repeating what I mentioned earlier, the piece started very much some years ago with me spending a lot of time with my grandma and at the time she was living with late onset Alzheimer's and her behaviour, specifically her awareness, uh, changed from minute to second to hour to day. And um, it was in that moment that I sort of felt like there was something more happening behind uh, uh, what seemed raised eyes. And the more I've learned about Alzheimer's, the more I've learned from Dr. Dan and from the readings around is that Alzheimer's affects the ability to retrieve information and then which affects us learning how to uh, develop new memories and then consequently all the way to the point where eventually it stops our understanding of our continuity of time and the ability to even access our, our longer and more uh, ingrained memories in our mind. And there's still a lot of mysteries, as I mentioned earlier, within our minds and there's still some contention within the science world about where and how we encode information within the brain and where that possibly even is, it's even some sort of neuroscientists who might just go as far as to say that it possibly isn't stored in the brain, how would we feel about that. But when I think back to my grandma and those moments where she looked somewhat absent, uh, unaware and not there present in this reality or this, this time we call the present, I find it really hard to believe, or at the time I still do find it really hard to believe that there was nothing happening up here in her mind and she wasn't somewhere or living something or feeling something that she was just becoming an empty shell that was staring into nothingness. Um, and so this project started to look at our interest in the human mind and the worlds that our mind takes us to every day. After all, we dream, we daydream, we uh, reminisce. And our desire was to explore all these many different memories that we have, each within our heads and our minds, and to see if we could give an insight into possibly what might be happening to someone with late onset Alzheimer's in their mind. And to also consider these human conditions and see what that can tell us about our own identity. Um, it's safe to say that this project so far has taken us down so many different paths and we've learned so much, be that the uh, mechanics of memory, um, consciousness, which is the long, 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 long rabbit hole, um, tidal paths, the way uh, pianos work, uh, deja vu, dreams, daydreams all these have started to filter and refine their way down to where we get into the community. So all of the research that we've... Uh, I'm just going to start. I really apologise, but our projections are like really, really not working, so I'm going to have to just out-count them, <laughs> which is such a shame because there's something we're working on show. <laughs> uh, out of all this research, we've developed a story and began the process of creating an online platform to house both the story and the worlds we're hoping to uncover. And the question is why online? Uh, it felt to us initially a, a, a really right place for the story rather than on stage. Um, we wanted to create space where a much larger audience could submerge themselves in the artwork. And as, as a smaller company, uh, we're constantly restricted by the limits of space, time, budget, risk, and scale. Um, so to create a world that an audience could engage with over a period of time, at their own speed, within a bigger community, and um, that could still retain the essence of the content we were exploring. Um, felt it could not only allow us to do more justice to the content and the purpose of the project, but could also act as a springboard or marketing tool if we did intend to develop the project further. And um, the story. The story itself follows two female characters a mother and a daughter. The mother is an ex-concert pianist who is living with late onset Alzheimer's and the daughter, her carer, but who is also struggling to come to terms with the idea that she's actually losing her mother. Um, her mother is trapped between, not trapped, sorry, is struggling with the words of her past and her present, and she's 24 again, 
about to perform a seminal concert, a repertoire of Chopin's music, whilst her daughter is somewhat distanced herself from her mother with an obsession for a place, a specific place, which is a beach, which is what she believes to be her first memory. And so they are both delving into their past in search for something very specific. So the work deconstructs a number of key parts. As previously mentioned, we seek to deconstruct the brain and the mind and find out what this can teach us about consciousness and the workings of memory. Uh, through a research and development period at Interplay, uh, Interplay Space and Army, we also began to deconstruct a piano, uh, from its strings to its pedals, the echoes to its dampening of sound, the piano in body, voice and spirit has anthropomorphic qualities which we're keen to explore. The music of the mind is a phrase we've heard passed around and we're really interested to know what that could look like and what that could sound like. Um, our final deconstruction is the deconstruction of the Chopin Nocturne that you heard. So it's Chopin's Nocturne 48, number one in C minor. So music has been proven to have positive effects on dementia patients. It's a strong cognitive stimulus that grows the brain in a way that nothing else does. And the evidence that musical training enhances things like working memory and language is very robust. Our character, Sam mentioned, is an ex-concert pianist. And we've started to think about how the brain processes music and what music might sound like to someone with late onset Alzheimer's. And we've been discussing that uh, a bit more with Dr. Dan. Uh, so we chose this piece of music from Chopin and have started to process, uh, started the process of deconstructing it, rebuilding it to make sense of the situation and the environment both the mother and the daughter uh, find themselves in. So why Chopin? Well, he wrote pretty much solely for the piano. And there's very much a uh, love from pianists uh, for his work. His nocturnes specifically paint really vivid emotional pictures that we felt complemented our story really well. So we've been working with uh, an amazing composer uh, called Terry, um, and he's been composing some new music all based on uh, the Chopin Nocturne. Um, some pieces that are performed across five pianos, um, which look amazing on cheap music and even better live. Um, so we'd like to play very briefly one of those we might, we're going to play, we will come to this music, but possibly at the end, because uh, I'm not sure, I'm very aware of time. Okay. Um, uh, alongside the music, um, I'm really, that mean technology, um, but a really significant um, image uh, that's informed the content of this piece has been a beach or an art day school, a very sort of, you can see it slightly there, uh, many beaches in our respect. Um, beaches means so, or the sea, um, beaches mean so much to many different cultures, and specifically for our character, looking out onto that horizon, looking out onto what we can see, um, the daughter represents a sense of freedom and foreboding. Um, the horizon representing a physical place that she is unable to reach. And in the same respect, uh, a little bit like my grandmother in many respects, she knows that she'll never be able to understand or agree, appreciate what's happening in the mind of her mother but she'll be able to imagine, remember, and, and dream it at the same time. So recently we've been going on many trips around the coast of England to many different beaches and documenting as much as we can to try and get that sense of what it is to look out towards a horizon. I'm sure if any of you, I'm sure we've all been onto a beach and looked out to the sea and had some sort of feeling of what that brings to you and trying to capture that in an image um, and footage. And we are placing, in the process of pulling all of this material together alongside text, alongside uh, music, and alongside um, various other sim uh, storytelling forms to tell our story and place that on our online uh, platform. Um, I I'm aware of time, I won't come to an end, I'm really sorry, but um, we are uh, going to launch this later on this year, and we are holding a few events later on this year in September uh, here in Leeds, uh, Leeds International Chemical Competition and the Festival of the Mind in favour in Sheffield. So if you do want to continue or it has uh, given you
and you're a bit of a niggle to want to hear more, you can find us and follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, or our, our website, sign up to our mailing list, or we'll be about to have a chat afterwards. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Sorry for the rush. <laughs>